All right, guys, thanks for coming back to the channel. Uh, Twist Leaf Rod Shop, working on Jeep Rod again today. Uh, so in this video, we are making the steering gear box for the Jeep Rod. It'll be in this area right, right here somewhere. But actually it won't. So this is, this is an epic fail video. Um, if you want to see what I mean by an epic fail video, watch till the end. I explain it there. So, uh, yeah. Alright guys, uh, it's super windy. Uh, I didn't film much of this because I uh, was running short on time. But uh, we're starting on steering this week with the uh, the old Jeep rod. And uh, basically what I've been doing, just cutting, doing some plasma cutting. Um, you can see there, I've got a, a main bottom plate, this one, oh gosh, this one. And then I've got two plates right here. And uh, so basically what that does is gives me room you can see there cameras all crooked you can see there uh, you can see underneath it the light underneath it right there uh, that's what those plates are for and I think one fell out oh, maybe not come on camera anyway uh, two per side so basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna weld all of those on and uh, I might need three on that corner I'll just dimple it a little bit anyway uh, I'll weld all those on and then uh, drill straight through it and then uh, these holes on the steering gearbox are threaded. Probably can't see that. Um, but they're threaded, and so that'll give me a, a way to mount this uh, to a flat plate, basically, without uh, the curvature giving me a trouble. So, um, that's what I'll be working on next. We'll be uh, drilling those holes and welding them all together. And basically what that'll let me do <coughs> is uh, weld to that the frame right there. Uh, I'll put some standoffs on it so I can get the bolts in and out and whatnot. But uh, but yeah, so pretty simple. Um, nothing special. We're gonna be working on steering this this week, so I had to get something going on it. So there you go. So we got those hose, holes drilled. Uh, it's pretty hot still. Uh, most of my tabs lined up pretty well, um, except for that one. And of course, that's the one that I wanted to test and see how the weld would look on it. So I, you know, staked her down, and it's in the wrong spot. But it really ain't that big a deal. It'll still hold. It'll still work. It's just a spacer, so no big deal. Um, <clears throat> next thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and get the uh, the gearbox mounted to it. Um, and then, then we can start working on the standoffs from the frame. So we'll do that next. All right, guys. So <clears throat> got my plate made. Uh, you guys just saw me finishing up that. Got it bolted in, and then I've got uh, got some wood in here. So with the arm where it's at, uh, I got to be spaced out just a little bit from the frame, which is no big deal. And uh, it actually lets me get a little bit of angle here because I got to be able to miss the uprights here. Um, there'll be a universal joint there. And it can kind of kick in a little bit more, so I think it would be a deal. Um, but yeah, so there we go. It's kind of hard to see with that piece of wood in there. Um, but basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a couple standoffs that go from my plate to the frame on both sides. And then I will uh, I'll put another plate on the frame side that is attached to my standoff. So it will basically all be one assembly. And then what I'll do is I'll go back in and weld around the frame, or weld around the plate onto the frame. So basically this can be its own assembly here with its all standoffs and everything I can get it positioned front and rear where I want it but the angle will be correct and the height will be correct and then I can just weld it to the frame uh, and get it where I want it so 
Uh, that'll be the next thing we do. Uh, we'll cut some standoffs and a back plate, and we will go from there. Alright, back out here in the garage. It's, uh, it's raining. We're listening to Doe Diffie, and we're getting some stuff done. So, anyway, um... I have my little diagram there. So basically this is frame rail and this is where the steering box is. It has to be up because I want to lay that frame straight on the ground and uh, has to push the, the gearbox up a little bit. You see my chicken scratch. So um, um, also, I cut this out a little bit ago. I didn't, didn't film any of that because it's all just straight cuts. But uh, that'll be the, the frame, frame side of the bracket. Um, but here's what I need. Um, so this one's inch and a half for the front. The gearbox, if this is the front of the vehicle, the gearbox will be angled just a little bit just so we can get past our supports. Um, so this one here, so uh, this is frame side and this is bracket side. And so you get the up and out that we need. And so I need to make another one of these now, but it'll be an inch wide instead of this one's an inch and a half wide. And uh, once I get that done, we can weld these to this plate. And then weld uh, that assembly to our steering gearbox plate, and then we can weld it onto the frame after we make sure everything's going to work, obviously. But yeah, so there we go. So <clears throat> it's up off the ground just a little bit still, but, or it's on the ground, we need to pick it up off the ground a little bit still, but you see what I was going for with the standoff there, and then uh, this one here, this one here I'll cut, I just left it that length because I didn't know 100% where it needed to go yet, so I'll, uh, I'll slice that one off, and then uh, you can see I got a little bit of a gap here on this one, because this is curved, and I didn't think about that when I made that piece, but no big deal, and then this piece a little bit tall, I'll cut that off too, um, but now what I can do, once I cut all those pieces off, is I can uh, pick this up off the ground a little bit, weld it into place, and then boom, there we go. We got the mount done. So uh, next thing I'll do is I'll probably do a little bit more welding on it, and uh, then I will uh, cut those pieces off, and then uh, probably what I'll want to do next, uh, I've got these right now, the gearbox is threaded. Um, these are just screwed into the gearbox. I think I'm going to go ahead and take those out and run a bolt in from the back side which would actually be the inside of the front side of it. And then I'm going to put a nut on it, and I'm going to weld a nut to it. So basically I'll thread it in into the nut. That way you don't have to get to the back side at all. And then I can plate this. And then also I can plate right here. Um, and that should make it should make it a lot stronger, um, you know, if the whole thing's boxed in. So uh, next thing I'll do is I'll cut the excess off right. Oh, cut that off and then cut off a little bit right there and uh, probably do a little bit more final welding on it and then we'll get those bolts in place. So there you go.
All right, guys. Uh, gimbal died on me, so I got you guys on the chest cam. Anyway, so we got uh, sides, two plates. Everything is made. So now I'm gonna go ahead and unbolt it, and then uh, probably do a little more finish welding on it. Well, guys, <laughs> you know, uh, custom fabrication on uh, hot rods and rat rods is fun and all. But one of the downsides of uh, completely making up everything and uh, doing a front end that is just completely all your own, uh, you, you, you do run into some problems sometimes. So, um, in this video, I'll include this at the end of this video, um, you watched me make a steering box mount for my Vega crossover steering box. Uh, made the whole mount, uh, got it, uh, we'll say 30% welded. And... Uh, Kind of clamped it to the frame. Didn't weld it to the frame yet because I didn't know 100% where it was going to go. And uh, let me get over here with the lights a little bit better. Clamped it to the frame and was doing some, some brain drizzling. Trying to figure out what all I want to do for lower links and steering links and just all that kind of stuff. And I started really running into some roadblocks with it. Um, which crossover steering on a cantilever front end, like it, it, you don't see it because it probably just doesn't work. <laughs> I probably could make it work. Um, I had a couple ideas on how to make it work, but it just wasn't really, wasn't really meshing, wasn't gonna work out in a way that um, was going to work well or look good. And you know, I mean, it's a rat rod, but I don't want it to look like junk at the same time. I want it to be pretty clean still, as clean as I can make it. So, um, with that being said, I came out here, I've been out here for the last like two hours. Um, Mocking up stuff, thinking of stuff, changing stuff around, moving stuff around, measuring, looking, measuring, looking. And really wasn't coming up with any great solutions for it. And so I went to the internet, you know, good old trusty internet, went to the Rat Rod page on Facebook and uh, posted the questions. Hey, you know, what, what, what can I do here? Or, you know, will this idea work? I had an idea in mind. I'll go over it with you here in just a second. And uh, a guy on there, Steve Moody. Uh, Steve Moody, if you're watching this, thanks again. Anyway, he posted a uh, Vega crossover steering box in the orientation of like a normal Ford uh, truck box would be. And I think that's what I'm going to end up doing. So I'll show you guys real quick. So <clears throat> this is where I'm at. You know, uh, you guys have all seen this if you watch my videos. If you haven't, go watch them now. I'll post a link up in this corner. There'll also be a link at the end. Um... I'm cantilever airbag in the front. You guys can see it there. Sorry, it's a little bit dark. Garage door's closed. I don't have any lights right here. Um, cantilever airbag in the front. Steering gearbox I was going to put right there. Crossover steering, so it was going to run. Uh, come on, camera. Right there. It was going to run over here to this arm you see right here. The problem that I was running into is with my lower links. So, with the frame being as low as it is on the ground, and the axle being where it's at, which isn't really that high off the ground, um, I could either get it where the steering crossover bar was good at aired out and not good at ride height or good at ride height and not good at aired out with all the bars being straight and so I started considering making these bars here curve down and then the steering bar curve up but I don't have a tubing bender and didn't really like the way that was going to end up looking didn't want these bars here to be too low and to possibly interfere with anything on the ground, which they still may be in straight, I don't know, but I didn't want them to be curved. Didn't have a way to curve them, didn't want to curve them. So I got to thinking about it and I was like, you know what, I wonder, steer box, steering gearbox is here, can I just run from my pitman arm, which would have been right here, to this arm? But with that short of a link, I was kind of worried about bump steer, which is the whole reason I went to the Vega box instead of the standard uh, Model A Ford truck box, whatever. And so I was worried about bump steer, and that was the question that I posted to Facebook, was can I go from here to here and run into minimal bump steer issues? Well, Steve Moody posted his Model A or whatever, a picture of a Model A, I don't know if it's his or not, with the Vega box right here. Now, this kind of looks weird because of my mount's in the way, but you can see uh, Pitman Arms right there, and what I'll end up doing is drilling a hole through the frame and mounting it there. And then the pitman arm will come straight up. And then it'll be like a conventional uh, Model A where the pitman arm comes up and then goes to here. And with the Vega box, I should still get less of the squirreliness that you usually get out of the four truck boxes. 
um, which is why I wanted to run the Vega steering. And also, too, that's going to make my steering angles better because, as you can see, the firewall would be right about there somewhere, and then the steering shaft from the steering column would be right here. So I'll have a short shaft and then, you know, universal joint, universal joint, and that's not bad because originally I was going to have it down here, and it was going to be universal joint, universal joint back here, pillow block, and then run up here, another universal joint, like five feet of shaft total, and I didn't really like that. So... But, bad thing is, I made this box, this mount, whatever you want to call it, and I'm probably going to end up having to scrap all of it, most of it, some of it, don't know. Regardless of how much of that one I'm going to be able to keep, I'm going to have to redo the whole thing. So, um, yeah, that's the fun of hot rodding, right? Uh, you do something, especially custom fabricated hot rods. Um, you do something, you think it's going to work, and then uh, it doesn't. So, that's okay. The good thing is, um, I found out now, before I really got a bunch of work into it, and a bunch of material cut, welded, in place, and everything else like that, and uh, really close to completing it. So, I'm happy I found out now. Um, that's just part of how it goes. So, um, this whole video that you guys are watching, this will be, this explanation will be at the end of this video. This whole video you guys are watching, um, I filmed it all, edited it all, uh, did all the work, and it's pretty much all for nothing. But hey, you live and you learn, right? So, hopefully, if any of you are out here watching this video and you're like, hey, I really want to build a four-link cantilever air ride Jeep, hopefully you're watching this video and you know, don't put your steering right there. <laughs> anyway, um... That's actually good though. Um, it's good that we're going to move it because what that does is uh, I can run my links either in this orientation like they are now, the the plier, or the MDF, or I can run them like this, um, which I wanted to run them like this originally because I think it looks better that way. It gives me a lot more availability there. Um, also, I was going to run a friction shock just because I think they look cool. I was going to mount the friction shock to the frame. And if I run the bars like this, I can mount the friction shock to that, and it'd be kind of cool. Lots of options for the friction shock now. And it'll clean up this area a lot more than having the gearbox right there. Because the gearbox is going to make it look not symmetrical. I was going to have to cut the grill out a little bit. I was going to have to do a lot to get that gearbox to fit right there. And I'm honestly, like, don't get me wrong, I don't want to remake that mount. But it's going to clean this up a lot, and that's going to look really good. And that's going to look a lot better. Um, I want this to be clean because it's it's kind of the the star of the show, if you will. You see that first when you walk up on the car and whatnot. So it'll clean this up a lot. Um, kind of simplify my steering shaft, which will look cleaner too. And just overall, it'll it'll be better. Um, won't have to run into issues with the steering shaft going right by the bag fitting, so on and so forth. So you know, like I said, um, you live and you learn. Um, I lived through building that box, and I learned that uh, I did it wrong. So that's part, like I said, that's custom fabricating, that's hot rodding, that's building rat rods, um, that's building rat rods in your garage. So there you go. Anyway, uh, this will be the end of the video now. So if you watch the whole video, thank you. Uh, if you watch this part, hopefully you learn from it also. And uh, if you watch this video, hopefully you watch some of the other ones, and hopefully you watch the next videos coming up. So. Uh, like, share, subscribe. Don't forget to come back next time for more hand-built hot rods.